Hi guys, this is Sadek from Problem.com and in this video, we'll show you how to flash the latest Evolution X ROM based on Android 15 onto your Poco F5. So please take a backup of all the data on your phone and then let's get started. First off, get hold of the latest Android FCK platform tools from my guide and extract them onto your PC. You may extract them anywhere you want. In my case, we have done the extraction in C drive and as you could see, these are the files of platform tools. Once you have done the extraction, you will now have to enable USB debugging and OEM unlocking. Debugging is required for ADB command, whereas OEM unlocking is required to unlock the booter on your phone. So let's now enable both this toggle. For that, go to the settings menu, then go to about phone and tap on OS version 7 times. You will get a prompt that you are now a developer. Now go back, go to additional settings and you should now see developer option. Go there and enable the toggle next to OEM unlocking as well as USB debugging. Now you will get a prompt, check mark, I'm aware of all the risk and you now have to wait for 10 seconds. Once the time frame has elapsed, just tap on OK and after that you might also get an RC key prompt. So again tap on OK in that prompt as well and with this debugging is now enabled. Let's verify the same. So go to the address bar of platform tools, type in CMD and hit enter. This will launch command from inside platform tools. Now type in ADB devices and verify that you're getting an ID. If you're not getting any ID, then unplug and replug your phone from the PC, disable and re-enable USB debugging, tap on revoke USB debugging, use the official USB cable that came with your phone and use the USB 2.0 port on your PC. So carry out this USB fixes and verify that you're getting an ID. Once you're getting an ID, you will now have to unlock the booter on your phone. Do note that unlocking will wipe off all the data and it might make the warranty null and void as well. If that's well and good, you can refer to a guide and the video and get this job done via the official me unlock tool. Once you have unlocked the bootloader, the phone will undergo a wipe and then boot to the OS. So make sure to re-enable USB debugging once again. Once that is done, you will now get hold of the C Android Evolution X ROM from this link and the recovery as well. Okay, so one important thing is that at the time of recording this video, the Evolution X ROM is still in an unofficial state. So we will have to flash the ROM via the TWRP recovery and not the Evolution X recovery. So keep this point in mind. Once the ROM is in the official state, I will make a new video as well. But for the time being, the ROM is in an unofficial state. So you have to do the flashing via the recovery itself, the TWRP recovery. So get hold of either the GApps or the vanilla build of the ROM. As of now, I'm using the GApps build and also download the recovery file. The TWRP recovery should be named as SKK. You may go to my guide and download the recovery, which is something like this. Let me show you. Just give me a second and the recovery naming should be this one ending with SKK and in my guide it will be something like this. The It's the first recovery file. Let me open the link as well and show you. So go to my guide and the first recovery file TWRP Android 14 is the one which we are talking about. So get hold of the recovery file as well and once you have got the recovery and the ROM file, let's now proceed ahead and flash the ROM file. So first of all you will have to boot your phone to fastboot mode. For that, type in ADB reboot bootloader and hit enter and your phone should now reboot into fastboot mode which should take just a few seconds and once it's in the fastboot mode, type in fastboot devices and make sure that you're getting an ID. If you're not getting any ID, then you'll have to install fastboot drivers on your PC. We have made a separate guide and a video on the same. You could refer to a guide and get the job done. Once you've installed the drivers, right click on the windows icon and choose device manager then expand the Android phone section. And make sure that your phone is being shown here as Android bootloader interface. So this as well as the serial ID next to fastboot signify that your PC is able to read the phone in fastboot mode and we are now good to go ahead. So now let's start off with the flashing process of the Evolution X ROM. So first off, again I'm repeating is for the unofficial build. Once the official build goes live, I will make a new video on that as well. So first off, let's flash the WRP recovery onto our phone. So this is my guide. I have already linked the guide. You may also refer to my video and get the job done. So moving on, we have already done the first step. Likewise, we have done the second step as well. And the third step has been done as well. And download the recovery file from here now. The first recovery file, the SKK one and copy the recovery file and transfer the file inside the platform tools directory for the ease of convenience. Let's rename it to TWRP and the complete name becomes TWRP.IMG. It will now be easier to type in the CMD window. So once that is done, we could now flash the recovery file. So in the recovery partition, for that type in fastboot flash recovery and as file name and as you might be aware, 
the poker f5 have two recovery slots the a and b so you could first flash in slot a and then in slot b or you could combine and flash across both the slots at one go which is what we are doing here it will now flash across both the recovery a and b slot as you could see it's flashed in the recovery a slot and then the recovery b slot once that is done you will now have to reboot your phone to the flash recovery so type in fastboot reboot recovery and hit enter and your phone should now reboot into recovery you could simply copy paste all this command from my guide as well this is the command fastboot or you could either use a and b individual or combine the command and flash it and then reboot to recovery and as you could see we are now inside the recovery so we could now flash the ROM file so first of all you will have to do a format data which will wipe off all the data from your phone so go to wipe format data type in yes and hit the blue check mark once that is done go back again go back again go back go to reboot and choose recovery this will remount the data partition on your phone and once that happen we may then transfer the rom file and the gapps file or rather the only the rom file is required because the rom comes inbuilt with the gapps if you have got the gapps build or you may flash the vanilla build it's completely up to you as of now i'm flashing the gapps build so let me now show you the gapps build this is the one so copy the ROM file and transfer it inside the platform tools or rather on your phone. So transfer the ROM file onto your phone which will take a few seconds. Simply now go to install. Use the Evolution X file and right step to flash it. The Evolution X ROM will now be flashed and will take around 6 to 8 minutes. So let's just wait for that to happen. So guys the flashing is now complete. And you might get a few warning sign. That's completely normal and nothing to worry about. Just make sure that you are getting the success method at the top as you could see once that is done your last course of action is to do a format data so go to wipe format data type in yes and hit the blue check mark and if you want to flash any other zip file whether it's magisk or gapps or any file of your choice then make sure to do a reboot to recovery and only then flash the required zip file with that said we are done with everything now go to reboot and select system and your phone will now reboot to the newly flashed os do keep in mind that the first boot up will take up some time that is completely normal and nothing to worry about from the subsequent time that will not be the case moreover let's just wait for the boot animation or at least the boot logo to appear either of which will signify that the flashing has been done successfully and it should take around a couple of seconds more around 8 to 10 seconds to be precise and we should then see the boot animation of the evolution x from so let's just wait for that to happen and then we will have a look at the ROM features as well. And with this, we are now inside the OS. So let's get started. As of now, I'm skipping the initial setup process and will take you to the OS directly. I am setting up my ROM offline. If you want, you may set up online, link your Google account and restore all your data as well, which I am not doing for now, just to save, save some time and let's skip this as well. And with this, we are now inside the Ocean X ROM Android 15. I don't know why they always align the app in this weird manner. So let me at least keep it somewhat arranged. And there are only a couple of non Google apps. The first is the BCR, which is the automatic call recording app. And then is the James DSP, which is an audio enhancer. And that's just about it. And this is the QS tiles settings menu. And then this is the evolver where you, you get all the goodies. So first off is the theming section, the monet theming section. You may choose any color of your choice and the theme will be applied accordingly. Hit the apply button and as you could see, it's changed or you could even change the theme from here as well. And the changes have been implemented or you may change the luminance and chroma factor as well, enable the tint background. As of now, let me go back to the default theme. Then you may change the system font style. Whatever font you choose will be applied across the entire UI and UX of the OS. Likewise, it will also be applied in third party apps as well. So lock screen clock. Again, there are quite a lot of clocks that you could choose from as you could see. Let's first go through all these clock styles. And then we will choose one of them. So let me go with this one and I will now show you the clock style as well. As you could see, the changes is applied. If you remove the notification, then it will be at the center clock. Next up, we have the system icon shapes as well in the status bar. Let me enable a few toggles first. And now you could keep a track of the same. This is the circular one, as you could see. Plumpy and Samsung. 
going back we have the few icon shapes let's again apply the samsung one and have a look at that so as you could see it's now implemented next up you have the signal icon for the carrier data these are the various icon style that you could choose from then we have the wi-fi icon style as well then the navigation bar icon so if you are using three button navigation you may choose from any one of these tweaks as well next up you have the few lock screen tweaks which will show the charging stats so let me have a look and currently my phone is completely charged so it's only shown as charge otherwise show the voltage as well then in the status bar you may swipe to control the brightness then you may also enable the color icon so as of now it's white in color but when you enable the toggle then it will be changed to, to the same as shown in the app drawer for example you could see it's the play store icon which is white and now if i enable this toggle it will show the play store icon as well then you may also enable the notification count and it will then add the uh, the count in the app drawers app icon so whenever you receive a notification you will see the number as well next to the app icon as well and these are the privacy indicator which will be shown at the top right so whenever you open the gps camera or uh, any such apps which access these things you will be notified of the same then next up we have the qs setting which is currently blank and same as with the case with notifications so as of now it's in an initial early stage that is the reason why in power menu you may access the power menu from the settings menu it's working over here well and good we have the recovery and the fast boot mode but if you try to access from the this section it will not work so you may either use the power button as well to get the job done or use the qs tiles then there are a few miscellaneous tweaks which as of now allows us to do an application downgrade to an older version or spoofing so you may spoof the plain negative fix and pass the basic and device this will not allow you to pass the strong integrity but in most cases that is not required you may simply pass the basic and device and get the job done but if you want to pass the strong as well then you may refer to my guide and use the keybox xml file to pass the strong integrity as well then apart from that you may enable the pixel props to get hold of a few pixel goodies as well and as of now it's using a pixel 9 model to pass the play integrity and this is the fingerprint which it's using and play store spoof to the latest pixel phone you may also enable the google photo spoof this will give you unlimited google photo storage in original quality then you may enable snapchat spoof as well however do keep in mind that only enable the spoof of a single pixel phone for example in this it will enable google apps to the latest pixel device which means the pixel 9 and over here you have enabled it for the pixel xl so it will conflict between the pixel 9 and the pixel 1 so depending on the use case scenario only enable any one of these toggle as of now i want the google photo spoof so i'm turning off the other toggles both of them are for the pixel 9 whereas this is for the pixel 1 and i want the google photo storage that is why i'm using this one you may also enable higher fps in games the frames per second and apart from that these are the few miscellaneous tweaks then you could go to the wallpaper style section and choose the wallpaper from here and change the color as well depending on the multiple ui theming engine and add the shortcuts at the left and right of the clock and then you may also go to the home screen and enable the theme icon from here and it's implemented likewise change the app grid size up to 5 cross 5 then apart from that let's have a look at the home settings so let me access that as well and in the home settings you could enable notification dot from here as well add new icons new icons and apps to the home screen and that's just about it there isn't any much customization as of now and whenever you have any options enabled from here it will be notified you for at the home screen itself you may simply turn off the flashlight from here as well as you could see just now and let's access the settings menu and that's just about it there are a few android 15 specific features as well i don't think it might be there as of now the new settings ui revamp menu is there then power menu is there as well the partial screen recording let me have a look so that is also working you will you could easily record in a single app just choose a single app from here tap on start recording and choose the app of your choice the screen recording will only happen inside that app once you switch over to any other app the recording will be paused and only resume when you go back to that app 
Definitely to back gesture. Let me have a look at that. That is currently not working. It's the default back gesture, not the Android 15 one. So that's not working as of now. The volume panel style. Let me have a look. The volume panel is also from Android 14. Battery information page. Let's see if it's there or not. Battery information. So it has been added. So it will give you all the required battery information. There is no need to get hold of third party battery apps as of now. Private space. Let me check that as well. It's also a new Android 15 feature. So the private space is there. That's quite great to see. First of all, you will have to set a screen lock on your device and only then the private space will work. So let's set me, let me set up a screen lock. Once that is done, let's set up the private space. For private space, you could either use the same lock for your lock screen or choose a new lock screen. I'm choosing a new lock pattern. You may choose the pattern or pin or anything of your choice. And now I am using a pattern for the ease of convenience. This is my lock screen pattern for the private space. Let's confirm it. Do it later and the private space will now be made in a few seconds. So let's just wait for that to happen and all set and done. And let's access as you could see this is the private space. Tap on the settings icon. Type in the password and you could now access the private space from here. Likewise, you may access the settings menu and even hide this private space. Go to hide private space, enable the toggle next to it. Tap on got it and as you could see the private space is now hidden in the app drawer as well. No one could keep a track of that. To access it, you will have to now do a search in the Google. So type in private space and then you could open it from here using the lock screen pattern. And let's access it and as you could see it's not visible but again it will be turned off when you type in like this. If you want to re-enable it and keep it visible all the time, then again open private space. Simply go to the settings menu from here of the private space and then you may re-enable it and disable the toggle next to it and it will be there all the time. So guys, apart from that, the taskbar feature is currently not there in the ROM, it's missing. Usually you could find it in the home settings, but as of now, it's currently not there. So guys, it's an extremely early stage of the ROM. It's an unofficial build and that is the reason why there are some features missing. For instance, let me show you once again. If you go to the Evolver section over here, the QS settings as well as the notifications are currently missing. The power menu can be accessed from the QS tiles or using the power button as well. But both of these are currently missing. So once a new build is released, I will update my guide with the latest build. You may get hold of that from there and then also the flashing steps will change once the official build is live. So as of now it's an unofficial build so you could easily do the flashing via the of the RP recovery. But once the build goes live, the official build is live, the flashing will then require the official Evolution X recovery and in that case you will have to do an ADP side load. So I'll make a new video at that point in time as well. But for now we have only the unofficial build and we have to get used to it as of now. Anyways, on that note, I round off this video. If you have any queries with regard to any of the steps, do let me know in the comment section. And thanks a lot for watching.